Right, just to be respectful of everyone's time, I think they're still logging in, but we'll get started. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kenia Samarripa. I serve as Executive Director of the um, Chambers, um, um, Executive Director of National Business Affairs at the San Diego Regional Chamber of Commerce. And it is my pleasure to welcome you all to today's International Business Affairs Forum. We have great speakers today. I'm excited to hear all about resources and initiatives that enhance international trade for small and medium-sized enterprises. And again, as, con as people continue to log in, I want to remind you all that we'll have this webinar on demand as well on our website. So feel free to share after afterwards. And also taking a moment to give special thanks to our guest speakers who are here today to share their insight on each of their agency's role in helping small businesses grow by entering international markets. Uh, now, as uh, the largest nonprofit advocate for the San Diego business community, here at the Chamber, we have a mission of making this region the best place to live and work. Um, representing 98% of San Diego's business community, these small to medium-sized businesses with fewer than 100 employees currently employ 59% of our city's workforce. And in fact, 27% of the workers are in businesses with fewer than 20 employees. So definitely a large percentage of, of our community. Some of the top SMEs industries offer professional, scientific, and technical services, finance, real estate, insurance, and of course, retail. Um, now, SMEs are projected to be the primary driver of regional economic growth, but often lack that resource, the resources and support that they need. Um, today, it is also important to acknowledge that the pandemic highlighted San Diego's global interdependence and this impacted a variety of industries and resulted in tremendous job losses. Access to customers and markets, of course, is key for any organization's long-term resilience, yet those challenges and the digital acceleration and interrupted supply chains hit SMEs the hardest. So in response to that, regionalizing production closer to the consumer market has become an option to attract new customers and also increase sales. And um, by supporting the internalization of SMEs, companies can now become more resilient at the same time they will create quality jobs within our community. And as I briefly mentioned, our guest speakers will share information on initiatives and resources that enhance trade for SMEs and, and share how different agencies and stakeholders collaborate to help them thrive. They will also share an overview of the upcoming Summit of the Americas, which will take place next month in LA, gathering international leaders and promoting cross-border collaboration, economic growth, and prosperity. And a couple of housekeeping instructions. I want to ask all attendees to please type in your questions on the chat or the Q&A box, and we'll get to that later. And with that, I'm honored to welcome today's guest speakers. We have Mr. Dilawar Sayed, who serves as Special Representative for the Commercial and Business Affairs Bureau of Economic and Business Affairs at the Department of State. In this role, he leads efforts to support local businesses export through commercial advocacy and to create a level playing field for U.S. companies overseas. Um, special Representative draws from his experience as an entrepreneur and public servant who has advocated for inclusive entrepreneurship at the federal and state level. And in the Obama administration, he played an active role in promoting the State Department's global entrepreneurship program and connecting Silicon Valley innovators with emerging entrepreneurial ecosystem. He also served on President Obama's White House Commission on Asian Americas and Pacific Islanders and shared the White House initiative on Asian Americas and Pacific Islanders Economic Growth Committee. Also joining us today is Colleen Siemens, who serves as Pacific South Regional Director in the U.S. Department of Commerce. And as well, one of eight regional directors across the country, she leads a field-based team of client-focused trade professionals with deep experience working on U.S. exporters to resolve barriers to market entry and also identify new opportunities to grow U.S. export sales. And prior to her current position, she serves at the, as the agency's Baltimore Export Assistance Center Director, which she also co-led Trade Wins. And for those of you that don't know, that is the department's largest annual trade mission and business development forum. So we're very pleased to have you both here with us today. Welcome. And to get us started, I'll turn it over to Special Representative Sayed. 
thank you so much, uh, Kenya, for having me and for your uh, kind introduction. And uh, thank you all for joining. Before I before I uh, speak, um, I, I just want to take a moment um, to acknowledge the unspeakable tragedy that has taken place in Texas. Um, as public servants, um, as parents, um, this is on our mind. Um, and it's no words can do justice to what parents across the country and all citizens are facing and feeling today. So I, I just wanted to acknowledge that before we talk about um, our topic today. You know, at the end of the day, all of our work when we're enabling small businesses or enabling trade, um, it, it goes to building communities and all of this is connected. Um, again, thank you for having me. Um, I actually uh, I remember that the San Diego Regional Chamber invited me to speak when you were visiting DC. I, I'm sorry, could not, I couldn't join you in person, but I'm really glad that uh, I'm able to have this conversation virtually today uh, to you. Um, it's also special for me because uh, I am from California. So every time we have California um, engagement, it is, it's, um, it's, it's wonderful to, to be speaking uh, to my to my a lot of friends and colleagues in the industry. Um, I'll just quickly share um, uh, you know, my background um, and, and Kenya, thank you for, 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 for doing that, but just to add a couple of bits that I, am, I come from um, private sector myself and I've been in your shoes as a small business entrepreneur as a startup um, owner um, myself uh, who often built businesses that, that were export oriented and are global in nature. And I've seen up close and personal the um, the tremendous competition that we are facing in all industries, not just in innovative startups, uh, where I spent uh, most of my career in Silicon Valley, but also in other industries. Um, and I think the pandemic has clearly you know, raised the stakes uh, in terms of both the opportunity and the renaissance of entrepreneurship, global entrepreneurship, but also the challenges that communities face, especially uh, underserved uh, small business owners and exporters in underserved communities. So I come to this role as special representative with that, with that, um, with that worldview and 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 experience. Um, in California, uh, uh, I founded uh, an initiative called California Entrepreneurship Task Force that connects uh, our coastal regions, especially Silicon Valley, with Central Valley, San Joaquin Valley, um, and make sure that folks um, in certain underserved regions and, and minority communities have access to the same resources, uh, networks, and capital uh, that Silicon Valley entrepreneurs do. It remains an effort in progress. We work very closely with the uh, California Economic Development Office in Governor Newsom's administration. Um, um, but I, I, I'm sharing that because I, am, um, I have had um, interface with some of the issues that I know the regional chamber in San Diego has been working on, has been providing steadfast leadership for almost 100 plus years. Um, so with that, uh, let me share with you a little bit about, about our role here. And of course, my, my uh, colleague, Colleen, uh, will join us uh, from Commerce and talk about, especially the summit that's coming uh, just in your neck of the woods uh, in, a, in a week or two. So as special representative for commercial and business affairs at the State Department, I represent your voice as um, businesses. Um, so the private sector, voice um, is championed in this office. Um, we work with our intergovernment partners, commerce, trade, um, uh, Exim Bank, DFC, USAID, um, and our embassies and missions around the world to make sure that US companies, US exporters have a level playing field and they can uh, win abroad. Um, the reality is that um, in this increasingly competitive environment globally, um, countries large or small are all stepping up to have the back of their exporters. And um, it's not about one competitor. What I've seen is, and I think many of you also know this, even our allies are competing with us uh, head to head in some industries. So um, how my office gets involved is uh, through a range of uh, programs. One advocacy. There are certain um, deals, um, certain uh, companies, uh, deals that are of strategic interest to the, to, the, to the U.S. government that we actually get involved to make sure that, you know, we are taking any kinks out, any friction out of the process for U.S. exporters to win business. Um, number two, we have a network of 1,500 economic officers that are 
uh, that work in the State Department in various embassies and missions around the world, um, they act as, if you will, biz dev officers for our exporters. Um, let's say if you if you if you need help with identifying an ex, uh, a, a distributor in Colombia, we could we could um, we could assist you with the help of our uh, economic officers in Bogota and so forth. And and that's a program that we run, uh, obviously through our uh, ambassadors and our embassies, but also in close partnership with Foreign Commercial Service, FCS uh, at, at the Commerce Department. And Colleen obviously comes from that um, agency. Um, and so that's the second area where we actually, you know, connect you with resources um, as you look to export um, abroad. Uh, and then of course, third is just the sharing of knowledge and information, you know, webinars, ambassadors, uh, sharing opportunities for investment in ho host nations that we want to make sure um, that, our, um, that our exporters are aware of. Um, one of the ways that I'm trying to steer the focus of my office and, and my own work um, is towards making sure that not only big companies who often, frankly, uh, we have worked closely in the past, but also uh, small and medium businesses, especially in underserved regions and underserved communities are aware of these programs. Um, quite frankly, um, there is a dearth of awareness. Um, I have launched a listening tour in my first 100 days of, of stepping into this role. And what I find is that um, most, uh, most exporters uh, or, or aspirational uh, or, or, or aspiring exporters are not fully aware of the absolute breadth of programs and services that the Commercial Business Affairs Office, or for that matter, even other intergovernmental agencies are offering. Uh, so we have, a, we have a challenge ahead of us, right? We need to make sure <clears throat> that as you get ready to export, uh, you know what are all the tools and programs that are out there. So we are pushing information out, um, but also with forums like these, where I'm um, participating around the country, both virtually as well as in, in, um, in person, we, we talk about all the resources that exist in the might of the US government to make sure that we have your back as 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 exporters. Um, I would love to take questions, obviously, and make sure that we address, uh, but I wanted to give you a high level view of, of what we cover in this office, um, what our core is, um, and, and how we are trying to change, do, do, do things differently. In the end, um, my focus is really to make sure that we democratize access to commercial diplomacy, not just for a few, but for uh, all exporters across the country, especially those who have been historically been not served as well. Um, just uh, a little bit about the Summit of the Americas, and I will let Colleen do uh, more of the details on that. Um, but it's a, it's a huge honor that we are hosting um, uh, the, you know, the, the Americas, if you will, right? North, South, Central, Caribbean, uh, for the first time since 1994. And it speaks to President Biden's commitment uh, to, the, to, the, to the region. Um, I think the challenges we've faced as a region, as Americas in the last few years, especially in the pandemic, um, have reinforced the, that we have shared pain, shared, shared challenges, but also tremendous shared prosperity um, ahead of us. So a few themes that will be pretty present um, at the summit, one, inclusive growth, equitable growth, um, uh, sustainability, uh, those will be cut across. Um, there is going to be a CEO forum that I think will be of interest to many of your members. <clears throat> Colin will speak about that in more detail, but I'm pretty excited um, that we're gonna to bring together um, uh, uh, CEOs, not just from large companies, but also for, from mid-sized companies and startups together, both from the United States and as well as, well as our um, friends from around the region. Um, and then within the CEO forum or along the sidelines, there are a couple of um, other uh, other forums that might be of interest to you, one on digital transformation, other one on clean tech um, uh, transition. So a lot of topical discussions that would involve many of you, hopefully, um, and, and, and our colleagues in the region. And that's really an opportunity for business leaders and CEOs or small business owners, exporters, uh, to share their perspective about how do we make sure that we exchange ideas, we improve trade, we take friction out of, of trade. Um, and we also involve communities that again, have often been not um, at the table when it comes to you know, trade and international business. So with that, uh, let me pause. Um, um, would absolutely love to take questions um, uh, after Colin has, has had a chance to share a little bit more about, about the Summit of the Americas. 
Thank you, Special Representative Say. Uh, again, we'll take questions at the end. So with that, we'll turn it over to Regional Director Simmons for an overview of the role of the Department of Commerce, as well as the upcoming Summit of the Americas. All right, thanks. Can you hear me okay? Great. Well, it's a pleasure to join you this morning and greetings from San Diego, where I'm based. Um, uh, I, I am um, honored to have the privilege to speak alongside my colleague, Special Representative Syed at the State Department. Um, as we collectively prepare for the Summit of the Americas, which is coming up in just two weeks, um, thanks to the San Diego Regional Chamber of Commerce and its International Business Affairs Forum, especially Kenya and Jimena, uh, for this opportunity uh, to share some information about the Department of Commerce and the International Trade Administration's engagement at the Summit of the Americas. Uh, so again, my name is Colleen Simons. Um, I'm the Department of Commerce's Regional Director for the Pacific South Network. Um, our network out here includes the states of Hawaii, Nevada, and Central and Southern California, which is where I'm based. Um, in my role as the Regional Director, I oversee a team of 30 trade professionals out here um, that are dedicated to helping U.S. business um, owners export overseas. So I'm sitting in our office right now in San Diego in Kearney Mesa, um, and many of you may know our team, including Director Matt Anderson and the trade specialists that work here, Aaron Davidson, Kathy Bridges. Uh, we have a new team member joining us, um, JQ Roder as well. So we're excited to grow the team here a bit. And we'll be having a commercial officer join the team who will recently arrive from, or will soon arrive from Shanghai, China. Um, and she will be able to help companies in the greater San Diego area uh, navigate that challenging market at times. Um, and moving north, we have offices in Orange County and Los Angeles County. Um, so it's our LA offices that are really most engaged in the upcoming Summit of the Americas uh, that um, uh, Delore mentioned is set to host and um, to take place in LA. Uh, the ninth Summit of the Americas is just happening in two weeks, June 6th through 10th in Los Angeles, as I mentioned. Um, so there's a lot of information out there on the summit. There's also a lot of news about what's happening currently. Um, we are hopeful that all the preparation will pay off and that the heads of state will be able to meet and have discussions about uh, cooperation across the hemisphere. Uh, our region, just a bit of background. What I thought I'd do is provide a little bit of background um, as my colleague at the State Department did on what we do, how we can help you, and then get a little bit more into opportunities related to the summit. Uh, so ITA, as we're known, the International Trade Administration, is really fully engaged in the region um, on behalf of U.S. businesses and workers. And we do that through the U.S. and Foreign Commercial Service, um, as Special Representative Syed mentioned. Um, we are present in over 100 locations in the United States, including here in Southern California. And then in North and South America, we have 23 offices um, across 14 overseas markets. So the bigger the market, the more offices we have. So we have five in Brazil. Um, and we have one in Costa Rica, right? And those offices are dedicated with staff and commercial diplomats to help you all. Uh, that's how we help companies. We really make the international business connections. We secure business contracts for companies and we help our companies here navigate the regulatory and, and import requirements of those countries. Uh, where we don't have an office, we rely on the State Department, which is great. We have several partner posts that help us provide services to companies. And our services are often low priced or free, depending on the size of your company. Um, they, uh, they kind of range from matchmaking to due diligence on foreign partners to helping you globalize your website to make sure if you're aiming to target it in Spanish, it's in the right type of Spanish and um, reflects the culture that you're aiming to target in terms of your business consumers. So our team always stands ready to work with you and your companies, whether large or small, to identify business opportunities throughout the Americas. Uh, and we have kind of, there's, there's opportunities across every sector, but we've uh, noticed in the last few years, really um, particular clusters of opportunity in the sectors of agribusiness, education, energy, healthcare, environment and clean energy, food processing, infrastructure, which is bridges, roads, ports, information technologies, um, telecommunications, hospitality, so hotel and restaurant equipment, and then travel and tourism. Uh, in terms of business opportunities at the summit itself, so the summit is planned to take place that second week in June, June 6th through 10th. Um, it will take place in downtown Los Angeles with a many ancillary or side events. 
Um, so the, the anchor is the heads of state meeting um, with the presidents and heads of state of all the countries. Uh, but then there's also lots of opportunities to engage as special representatives. I had mentioned there's the CEO summit, um, which I'll talk a little bit more about. That's the, the business anchor event that's planned by the US Chamber of Commerce. Uh, but there's also many other events that relate to specific sectors. So I'll talk a little bit more about some of those depending on your, um, your company and your sector, they may be of interest. Um, and one website I wanted to point you to that I think probably does the best job at outlining all of these sort of side events is global.la slash summit of the Americas. See if I can go ahead and put that in the chat right now for you all. Um, take a look there. A lot of these events that I'll mention are captured there and you can learn a bit more about the location and the timing. Uh, so at the CEO summit, which will take place uh, June 8th and 9th, um, as I mentioned, the US Chamber is organizing that and the US Chamber recognizes that a lot of its members are large companies. So they reached out to our team and a handful of folks um, that work at our export assistance centers here in Los Angeles that I manage and asked us to recommend some businesses which we were closely engaged with that we know have um, experience working in a handful of markets across the Western hemisphere. So we were able to recommend um, about 20 businesses that we know do business in Latin America and could participate in those discussions that um, Delore was mentioning about what are the challenges of doing business in Peru? And what does that look like for a small company versus a large company? Uh, so, you know, all the countries are a bit different. So we're hopeful that those individuals will be um, able to attend and represent that small business perspective. And that's because we often work about 86% of the companies we work with at the US Commercial Service are small businesses. We uh, were privileged to be able to recommend some companies. And hopefully if you work with our team and that's something you're interested in, we could, you know, in the future, put your name forward as well. Uh, in addition, the government and business delegation um, a handful are coming up from the region. Our team in Costa Rica, um, the economic officer and the commercial officer are bringing up a delegation. So if you're interested in the Costa Rican market, certainly let us know. We'd be happy to make introductions to those folks. Would require you to travel to Los Angeles. So keep that in mind. Um, and then there's a few other events I wanted to mention. Um, one really focuses on sustainable aviation fuels. We're helping arrange an event with Boeing and um, the relevant uh, Air Transport Association, the International Air Transport Association. Um, and we really, the goal is for that um, global air transport industry to meet its long-term climate change goal to achieve net zero carbon emissions. So if you're in that arena and you'd like to attend, please let me know. Um, it is um, a smaller event, but really specifically focused on uh, sustainable aviation fuels. Um, another opportunity related uh, to a side event that we're putting together, uh, the Department of Commerce, along with the Port of Los Angeles and the Los Angeles Women in International Trade Chapter, uh, is an event that focuses on empowering women with global in global trade with technology. So the event's going to take place on June 8th from 2 to 4 p.m., uh, the keynote will be the Lieutenant Governor of California, um, Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis, and the discussion will really focus on the tools which support women-owned businesses to grow, from digital skills to equal opportunity and access to global markets. Um, so I'll send a flyer to Kenya and Jimena for circulation, but I think that might be of interest if you are um, interested in that arena or on a women-owned business yourself. Uh, and then I um, wanted to speak about one more event that's taking place on June 9th. Um, this is towards the end of the week. The city of Los Angeles is hosting an event at the, L the Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator, LACI, it's known as LACI. Um, and this event will focus on how to establish public-private partnerships really in the sustainable ecosystem space. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and um, special representatives, I might be able to tell me if this is true, that it should be, um, it'll feature the presidential envoy uh, for climate, John Kerry. Um, and, you know, this is an invite only event, but if you're involved in this arena, we have an opportunity to recommend some individuals that uh, might be considered for invitation. So please let me know. Um, and then beyond that, our agency, you know, those are, those are opportunities at the summit. And the summit is a static event in two weeks looking out in Los Angeles, and we are excited that it's taking place in Southern California, but there are always opportunities in the hemisphere. So I wouldn't worry if you can't get up there to meet a handful of the folks that are 
coming into the region to attend um, because beyond the summit, um, our agency um, in conjunction with the State Department and Partner Post is always planning trade promotion and business matchmaking events. So we have a trade mission that will take place in August that will focus on Central America and the Caribbean and provide US companies the opportunity to explore um, six markets across the Caribbean. So I'll put a link in the chat if you're interested in that. Really it's tailored meetings to your company and you get to go along with this delegation of other US companies to explore those market opportunities firsthand and meet with potential partners. Uh, so I guess I'll stop there. There's endless opportunities. The best way for you to explore opportunities for your companies, of course, is to get in touch with our San Diego Export Assistance Center and we'll look at your specific company, where the markets might, um, which markets might hold the most opportunity for you. It could be Western Hemisphere in Latin America, but it could be Europe or Asia or Africa as well. So we're happy to kind of develop a custom plan for your company and um, really looking forward to having this energy and these individuals from throughout the Western Hemisphere come up to Los Angeles in a few weeks to, again, in person, which we haven't all done in a while, do some matchmaking, do some business networking, and hopefully help our companies here um, in Southern California secure some deals or make some business connections with colleagues um, in the Western Hemisphere. So with that, I suppose I'll stop and um, along with my colleague, be able to answer any questions you all might have that hopefully can help you figure out what the summit's all about and then also how we can help you beyond the summit uh, explore international market opportunities. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you both again for your insight and information you just shared. Um, we do have several questions lined up. Uh, so again, reminders, please submit your questions either through the chat or the Q&A box. So we'll start with those. Um, let's see, can you, This I guess this is not addressed to anyone in particular, but can you tell us about specific actions being taken to further support small businesses to engage in nearshoring, perhaps with our partners south of the border? I guess this is sort of like helping SMEs be part of that supply chain. Colleen, would you like to address that? Yeah, could you repeat the question, please? Sorry, I was looking at the questions in the chat and then I- I know, I have to roll like reading of them. And can you tell us about specific actions being taken to further support small businesses to engage in nearshoring, uh, perhaps with our partners south of the border? I think it has to do again with the supply chain or helping them be, be part of that integrated supply chain. Yeah, definitely. So obviously um, along with the regional chamber, there's a ton of opportunities um, for, this whole region, not just Southern California, but certainly um, the, the, you know, Cali Baja region to take advantage of uh, companies moving back to, to this area from largely Asia, but from across the, um, the world. So we have, um, I, and I would probably say most of our local partners, including the Smart Border Coalition and a lot of other of the local partners do this really well. They market the region well and attract investment. And we really allow states and cities who do this well to, um, to lead in this area because they know their assets. What we do at the Department of Commerce is we have a summit. Um, it's called Select USA. It's an investment summit. It's coming up next month in June, at the end of June. And what we do there is we invite um, the economic development organizations, including um, the city of San Diego, the county of San Diego, um, and certainly Imperial um, Valley Economic Development um, Authority to, to attend this. And what we do is we bring in many investors from across the globe to talk about, not of course, we can't specifically as the US government and the Department of Commerce say, go to San Diego, come here, it's the best place. But what we can say is if you're interested in working on that supply chain and an integrated supply chain with Mexico, there's a few places that have those assets, one of which of course is right here. And those um, investors come from all across the globe to this Select USA conference. I'll put some information in the chat about it. And we've been really successful at linking up those investors with um, regional development authorities that have these assets that they're looking for as they look to relocate into the United States and North America and shorten their supply chain. So that's what we're doing at the Department of Commerce, uh, but certainly always kind of point towards the local authorities that really are able to sell their region better than we can because they know 
the human capital resources, the distribution and logistics resources. So our job is really to point them to you all and then you all sell the region. So that's what we're doing at the commerce department level. I'm not sure if um, if uh, you would like to mention anything, Special Representative Syed, in addition. Well, um, thank you, Colleen. <clears throat> what I would add there is, um, I actually am really glad you asked the question. I, I think what I would say is we should more, we should put more energy to make sure that we are surfacing those near shoring opportunities because the supply chain issue that we're dealing with it's not it, it's going to it, it's going to be a challenge that is going to persist for some time. So what I'll do is I'll take this feedback. Um, we run this program and um, where we bring in ambassadors from host nations who, who talk about um, opportunities through this direct line webinar. So we'll see what is in the pipeline and we can probably arrange a conversation from some of the regional, um, so some of the ambassadors in the region to talk about specifically on nearshoring opportunities. I think it was a terrific question and um, there may be information that I may not be fully up to speed on. We will happy to share that with you. Kenya, you can please share with your members, but I would, I would like to take it up and see if we can actually bring a couple of ambassadors to talk about these opportunities to your members. Great, thank you, that'd be um, great. We can help definitely share that information again, also for Select USA and, and other upcoming events. Um, another question here, for Special Representative Sayed, um, with your business background, do you have a, a thorough understanding of what businesses need in order to explore international markets? Um, you mentioned the challenge of connecting SMEs with information, particularly those from vulnerable communities. What do you think are other obstacles preventing SMEs from taking advantage of available resources? I think there is a communication gap, folks. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing today is one important step and there needs to be many such steps for us to close that gap. What I have learned in my 100 days at the State Department, um, and I can say this with, with a fair amount of safety, there is an incredible breadth of resources that are available across the government. Um, and I'm, I'm talking about uh, you know, across agencies. Again, there's lack of awareness and we need to be in a place where we are pushing our information. Um, you don't need to uh, remember you are to come to us. We need to get out there. So one simple thing, um, you know, we have started to tweet uh, from the State Department about commercial diplomacy. That hasn't happened before. So follow us at Biz at State. We'll push out webinars that are coming. We'll push out some key factoids, mock intelligence reports, and so forth, right? But the, but there is a shift that we have to we we have to do in terms of making sure that we are we are proactively sharing information, um, and um, and that content is being consumed. So so that's that's a, I, I think that that's on us, but that's also um, something that I would request of of members here. Uh, to make sure that they are they are connecting with us, they're communicating with us on, in these di digital spaces. Um, in terms of other, you know, uh, what's holding folks back, and I'm just going to say it from my more entrepreneurial, uh, you know, background. <clears throat> I think um, relationships are key. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, communities um, can be can be somewhat insular, and it's very important that we reach across. Um, so whether it's like USA summit, whether even the sideline events that will take place in Los Angeles at the summit, other regional activities, and of course, you know, you provide you provide a platform here with the San Diego Regional Chamber as well. Relationships are key, and and so I would I would double down on making sure that we are reaching across to the extent we can be a convener at the State Department or at Commerce or as 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 us as together as leaders, we will do the same, um, and we need to bring these communities together. Um, we've had in the past entrepreneurship events that brought together diverse communities and entrepreneurs. Uh, we're gonna consider bringing some of those back uh, so that folks can connect with each other, build those relationships, not only with, um, with fellow entrepreneurs in the US, but exporters or other entrepreneurs around the region uh, so they can exchange ideas, uh, you know, develop those relationships. So again, that's, I know from my own experience is one of the X factors, right? For, for you to really um, um, you know, build business globally, and it's a it's a it's a it's a lever that I think um, uh, not all communities use as effectively as as we as we should. Thank you. Let's see another question here. Um, it's directed to Director Simon, but I think is for both of you really. What is a good starting point for SMEs looking to enter global markets? 
Is there a checklist, requirements, a suggested starting point before exploring this opportunity? Yes. <laughs> I mean, where to start, really? I, on trade.gov, we have a ton of resources, um, one of which is kind of like an export readiness assessment, right? So if you're kind of curious what elements you um, of your company are going to be affected by inter going international, start there. Um, as you as a small business owner can imagine, right, anything that your company um, does domestically is a little bit different overseas, your sales and marketing, right, you're going to look at different languages, you're going to look at different distribution channels, your shipping and logistics are different. So that's going to require, unless you have a great freight forwarder that can handle that and take that on for you, you taking a look at that angle of your business legal, right? Depending on your intellectual property and what you want to protect, you know what to do here in the United States, but it's different in Canada, Mexico, and internationally, right? So basically what's neat is if you go to trade.gov, there's a lot of resources that can help you understand, okay, my business is doing great domestically, but what do I need to consider when I start going to other markets? And it kind of walks you through those various elements um, in addition to, um, your website, right? And digital marketing. And so you're on Amazon Web Services here, but what in South Korea, they're using Coupang and they're using a couple other platforms. So I would start there as a starting point, trade.gov, do the export readiness assessment, kind of do your own assessment of your company and where you are. Um, make sure that um, if you're the CEO, you're bought in, it does take some time, right? These things don't happen quickly. If you're going to target markets, um, you're going to need to adapt a few things about your business to be successful in them. The good news is, as a small company, you can outsource a lot of these at the beginning, right? You can have your freight forwarder handle your logistics. You can get a grant from the state of California to help manage your website and, and target it to whether it's, you know, you want to add French for Canada and, and Spanish for Mexico. Um, you can have your accountant to start managing um, if they can handle currency outside of U.S. dollars, right? So a lot of that can be handled by your service providers, uh, but take a look at what it would involve and then start small pick one or two markets canada is easy right um if you don't want to go ahead and translate your materials right away and then go to mexico and we're here to help you but i would say um, trade.gov has a ton of resources for new exporters um, once you've kind of done your own homework and you understand what the commitment entails we can take you a step further at the local export assistance center great yeah so trade.gov for export readiness assessments Take note of that. Special representative, I don't know if, if there's anything you'd like to add. I think Colin covered them really, really nicely. I would just add that, you know, if you, um, if there's something additional you need, uh, don't hesitate to uh, go to the embassy's website and reach out to the commercial, um, commercial um, section. Uh, again, uh, we have economic officers, we have FCS present in, on the ground. Often these are, Believe it or not, nationals from the host nations. They understand the market, they speak the language, they, they are passionate about building trade uh, with, with American companies. So um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. And, and, and to the extent that we can be helped, things will channel back to us. So there are resources, but Colleen covered this beautifully, the whole, the whole uh, if you will, blueprint of how to go, how to go international for, for, for an SME. Yeah, and I have a personal question, and this is a follow-up. Are there any industries that, in your experience, are coming up as emerging markets abroad? Like, is there an emerging need? Um, thinking about SMEs, obviously, but what have you seen? Wow, that's a that could be a, a webinar in its own right, uh, Kenya. <laughs> no, what I would say is this: this, and I'm I'm come from the tech background, digital spaces. Before I talk about where the opportunities are. It, some of the businesses are global from day one. So when you launch a, a, a technology product, you can expect to probably get your first customers outside the United States often, right? So we have to think global uh, the day you launch in some industries. And, and I've noticed that a lot of times, even in, in Silicon Valley, startups were not ready for global because they were just focused on building um, you know, an application and they didn't realize that the first customer was from New Zealand right, or from Nigeria. So I think... Um, it, it, the, the fact is we remain an innovation powerhouse uh, for the world um, and in the tech spaces, you're going to get a lot of attention from the outside. Um, just I think the pandemic has shifted some grounds. There is an increasing, um, uh, uh, I think, appetite for digital services, uh, which could be an area that you could see 
health services, um, health check, but in general health overall, you know, that I think those are new areas, new, new, new uh, places where people need, um, uh, you know, products, technologies that we could, we could export. Um, but I can't think of, uh, broadly speaking, new opportunities that I could point folks to. I think every country is different, but what I would just say is that uh, if you are in certain industries, you can expect to be global uh, pretty quickly. Colin, do you want to jump in with any any specific um, uh, growth areas you've seen, especially in the region? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think, like you mentioned, Delore, depends on the, the company and the industry, right? Um, a lot of companies we work with here are developing really cool technologies that um, link credit to your, your kind of... Um, like, for example, one company creates credit based on your social media engagements, right? Like in the U.S., since we're pretty advanced in banking and most people can um, get some sort of access to capital, it's not relevant. But it's a huge market in, in you know, different um, parts of the country, um, Latin America, India, South Asia. So it's kind of neat. So that is designed to go global before it even hits the U.S. market. Um, so it really depends on the industry. What I would say is um, check out our country commercial guides. If you think you have a potential in Brazil, we have on our website um, that our overseas posts, um, our diplomats work together with the State Department to, to put out, and they identify the top markets um, in, by industry sector for each country, right? Um, if your market's not on there, I wouldn't worry, but that's where we've seen U.S. companies really do well, and often it points to healthcare, and you know, even within healthcare, it'll say, well, really, it's nutritional supplements and medical devices for this market, but in this market, it's certain pharmaceutical products. So it kind of goes into um, the very specific market opportunities based on what we're seeing people buy up, preference for U.S. products, per capita income, all of that. So um, hopefully that's helpful depending on uh, what markets you're targeting. I would check those out, see if your industry is one of kind of the hot markets that we've identified. And if not, then just get in touch and we can tell you, yeah, there's still opportunity there, but maybe it's in this one area. You know, if, if I may just add something, an additional point there, you know, one way to look at this is what are the growth areas where I can go and export? The other way to think about this, if you're solving a need in the U.S. market and you're adding value, chances are the need exists outside the United States as well. Um, that's why I, I don't, as an entrepreneur, I, I don't look at academically what well, there is retail, let me go after that. Well, if I'm doing well here and there is a market, you know, you're going to find if there's a middle class that is growing in, in the region, which many places are, you will find that need. So I think the question is, are you ready to make that leap, right? Are you ready to follow the playbook that Colin just shared <laughs> on how to go international, right? And that's where we are here to assist you because we obviously you want to invest in your growth and job creation at home. But I, I think for unless you are serving some very specific need within the San Diego area, which I'm sure may not be the case with all the members, you, you, you will have opportunities abroad. On the commercial guides, I would say that um, we're going to have an updated commercial guide, set of guides coming, I believe, later, earlier this fall. Um, and uh, they will reflect the, the pandemic and post-pandemic opportunities as well. So, um, uh, Colin, if you don't mind sharing where folks can find those commercial guides. I will do that now in the chat. And I was looking for the reaction to clap or give you a thumbs up when you said, <laughs> if you're successful in the US, there's probably a market internationally because that is so true. And your website's now your international resume. So the cool thing is companies can find you even before you're ready. But like you said, uh, special representative, I think when, you're, when the com your company is ready, if you're successful here, there is a market overseas. The question is like, how do you want to stagger that that engagement and that approach and that expansion to make sure you can handle it? But yes, I will find that link and put it in the chat. Perfect, thank you. And I think we go back to that readiness assessment, right? How am I doing here? Am I ready? Do I want to take that, that extra step? Um, and then just going back to the Summit of the Americas, um, a question here about how can local businesses potentially participate on it? There was mention of the CEO roundtable, but I'm wondering if there's still room to, to participate and a contact that the U.S. Chamber to reach out to. The question is if, if folks can still get into the CEO Summit. If you're interested, send us a link. So they are looking for CEOs, right? So mm -hmm. that's one requirement that you're a CEO or you're head of the company. Um, and if you are interested in traveling to Los Angeles, 
June 8th and 9th, um, let me know and I can put your name forward. No guarantees. Um, I know they've sent invitations out, I believe, already, but um, I'm happy to put um, any names forward that I receive. All right, I'll forward you this contact just to follow up on that. Okay. Um, and then I guess I have another question here. I think you've seen the comments too. Um, I guess the overall feeling is whether either of your agencies has communication with DHS, like whether that is sharing trade information and the economic impact of trade across the US, which can then help uh, with decision-making for on funds for border infrastructure and staff, which are critical to facilitating that cross-border trade. Um, is there anything, at least communication between the agencies that you can potentially share? Either one. Yeah, I mean, I, what I would say is I'm aware that our headquarters team, which largely runs engagement on the border, um, is part of several working groups. One, um, and I used to work at the Commerce Headquarters team on the Mexico desk, mm -hmm. um, and I participated in border working groups, cross-border engagement. So I would say I can confirm that, yes, Commerce and including State Department, um, work closely with DHS and the local officials, right? So SANDAG here, um, Caltrans, to coordinate cross-border engagement from the local to the federal level. There are several working groups, um, and they work from Brownsville to San Diego, Tijuana, on these issues. I no longer engage in them because we really focus on helping local companies export internationally, but I can confirm that I know Commerce, State, and DHS work closely at an interagency level to handle a lot of the cross-border challenges, mainly on um, logistics, infrastructure, waterways, and how the environmental impact is. EPA is involved as well. Uh, so I would say the short answer is yes. What that looks like really comes out of Washington more than I would say our local field offices, but um, we we certainly engage across the board to make sure all the agencies and the equities are considered when looking at um, cross-border trade and economic development. Perfect, thank you for sharing that. Um, Special Representative, would you like to add something? No, not to this. So I do want to acknowledge the first question I think Frances asked. Uh, she uh, this comment made about border crossing wait times and how onerous they are. Uh, to the overall economic activity between the two countries. Um, we will take that feedback and pass it on to our colleagues at the DHS. Um, totally appreciate where we're coming from and, and, and those are feedback that we get all the time. So we'll be happy to uh, uh, note this and, and, um, and share it with our colleagues at DHS. Thank you, that would be certainly appreciated. We actually just came back, well, not just came back, but in March, the end of March for the delegation trip, uh, as you mentioned earlier. And um, it just helps reiterate that we are suffering here at the border region. And we, of course, want our businesses to thrive and help them export, increase US exports. And both border infrastructure and, and staff are critical for that. Yeah, and here, if, if I may just say on this, uh, um, please highlight those stories. Mm -hmm. Please share the impact it's having, right? Not just a request, but how is it impacting a business? How is it impacting their ability to actually you know, conduct trade? How is it impacting job creation or job retention? I think those stories are very important. And that's a short, uh, as I mentioned to you, my job is to represent your voice at the State Department. Um, and, and we'll work with our colleagues, uh, the agency, the DHS, to make sure we're communicating the impact it's having on our communities. Perfect, thank you. Again, we can share, I mean, we've shared this report, but if it comes again through your channels, that will be greatly appreciated to just reiterate um, the economic impact that particularly our region is suffering. You know, we're talking about billions. Of Every year. Um, yeah, I think time for one last question and I'm reading it here so for both. Uh, tell us about how the Department of State and the Department of Commerce are working to increase community engagement. Are you working with stakeholders such as the Chamber and others to ensure SMEs connect with those resources and support from your agents? I think you touched briefly on this, but again, to wrap it up again, how we can continue to collaborate and be a resource for you. Well, today is a proof example of that. We're doing this, and we're going to keep doing this. Invite us back. Colleen and I will be back. We, now we can do virtual events. We can do hybrid. In my first 100 days, I think I've probably spoken at 20 different events, large or small, or all sorts of conversations. And with a big focus on 
um, small and medium businesses and those, frankly, who we have not touched before as a as a, as, a, as an office. So that's hugely important. Personally, it's very important to me. I've been in your shoes. And so let us know if there are other organizations we should be connecting with, speaking, sharing what, what, what we just shared here. We will do that. Great, um, Colleen, anything you would like to add or do you, either of you have any closing remarks, anything that we missed to cover that you think it's important for our businesses to note? Well, thank you for the opportunity. I would just say get in touch with us and we can kind of help you um, develop an international expansion blueprint that's right for your company. Obviously being here in San Diego, Mexico is a great option when you're looking internationally. Our economies are already so integrated, uh, but there's markets beyond that as the summit in the Americas will point to in Latin America. And if you can do business in the US and you can do business in Mexico, you can do business in a whole number of other countries that continue down into Latin America. And we're gonna help you do that. Um, and I would say, you know, just, uh, the State Department's here to help you. The Commerce Department's here to help you. Call one of us. We'll get you what you need. And um, then we have all the local resources as well, including the Chamber and a lot of other economic development organizations here in San Diego. So we all work together. Our goal is to help companies do more business overseas to create more jobs here. So we all work together. We all have the same goal, which is nice. So we don't have any pride of... Um, of ownership over that mission. We all collaborate together and looking forward to continuing to work with you all to help the companies in this area. Thanks. Thank you. Special Representative, any um, closing remarks, anything you'd like to add? You know, I would just say um, we are facing serious challenges, right? As a globe, as a, as a world, um, with the pandemic, uh, with, the, with the economic divides that exist. Um, and you have an incredible opportunity as entrepreneurs, as businesses to help not only solve problems, but to build forward. So I, I think I would, I would lean in. I would, I would go global um, uh, with, with more, uh, if you will, um, 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 uh, proactivity and, and let us know we are here to support you and, and, and you're part of the solution here. So I think Summit of the Americas is a terrific opportunity that will raise, regardless of your actual participation, will raise the importance of the region uh, to the conversation about global trade and you know what we need to do um, um, in this in this in this region so the fact that many of you have relationships in the region you have diaspora networks you have this incredible understanding of culture and language those are huge assets so i am optimistic about this moment and um, again as colleen said we are resources and partners to help you um, but uh, i do think this moment calls for uh, you know, your big role um, uh, to emerge um, in the region uh, to build economic activity both at home, but also, you know, to, to engender a shared prosperity across the region. And thank you so much for having us, Kenya. This was terrific. And uh, we, we were able to get at least a few questions uh, answered, but certainly hope to keep in active touch. Yes, no, perfect. We'll follow up with some of the, the questions of requests that we, we see coming in. Um, so thank you again, both Special Representative Sayed and Regional Director Simons for your valuable insight on all the information <laughs> answering all of these questions. Um, well, this is, I know, the time that we have for today, but hopefully we can repeat this at a later time. Um, we will follow up with you again for the updates, any information on upcoming um, events, summits, you know, conferences. We will we'll be more than happy to share that with uh, members and the business community in general. Um, again, hopefully we can host another forum. I, just, I think it's, it's just a lot of information that uh, we need to get out there, right? We need to have these people really listen and ponder about the opportunity and, and, and answer those questions as they come in, as, as they continue their path of growing and hopefully exporting at one point. Um, so we at the Chamber at least look forward um, to the future and we are very grateful for the opportunity to work closely with you with the local agencies and when we go to DC with both the Department of State and Department of Commerce. Um, and then on my end, I'll share just final announcement. Uh, please say to date, everyone, we have our binational delegation to Mexico City. Um, just as we went to DC, we're going to Mexico City from October 23rd to October 26th. We'll be meeting with key federal officials to discuss, discuss international commerce, foreign investment opportunities, and to cultivate those political and business relationships, as well as meeting with trade offices. And again, 
explore and strengthen, I mean, explore those opportunities to strengthen those ties so we can help our businesses also um, engage on um, with international markets. So with that, thank you again. Thank you both and have a, rest, a great rest of your day. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.